how are you doing? Jimmy here. I'm just checking the van over before its MOT test. Well, the purpose of this clip is to welcome you back to part two of the dual battery solar system installation video. It's easy for you to see. Well, like I just said, this is the second part of the solar installation video. So it would make more sense to watch part one first. So what I'll do is I'll put a, I'll show you what the thumbnail looks like there. And I'll put a direct link to the video there. So you can go and watch that first if you want. In this video, I'm going to finish off the installation process. I'm going to show you how to test it and I'm going to show you the system working so we're going to start this video where we left off in the last video and uh, carry on with the installation so here we go well so it's lower I've had to buy some more cable because the cable between the controller and the van battery was a foot and a half too short so a little tip always overestimate on your length of your cable if you're going to route it around and hide it the way I do um good thing is though um because it's the van battery and it's not too long the cable um i've been able to use 2.5 cable instead of the four mil that i've used for the long length um because as i said the controller gives priority to the leisure battery so you're only getting 10 percent of the available charge so you're not carrying a lot of current to the van battery so just to let you know two and a half mil for that one four mil for that now i did check with the experts the supplier just to make sure i wasn't going to throw any of the readings out by putting different cables for that than, than that and it's fine so uh 2.5 for that one anyway i've came in today and i'm going to route this cable now between the uh solar controller and the van battery now it's going to have to come down the door post on the inside of the door post out on the bottom of the door post and underneath the mat like i showed before to the batteries now something else i'm going to do today as well i'm going to put the two inline fuses um connected to the two batteries um before we connect the cable because at this stage you should have no cables connected and i'm also going to put an isolator um between the solar panel and the controller just in case in the future you want to do any work on the system you can isolate the the um, solar panel so I'll show you that when I've done it I'll do that today right we're just gonna fit the inline fuse holders you get two of these you get one for the leisure battery one for the van battery and I'm just gonna connect these prior to connecting the system up now you use these connectors and I'll show you quickly because most people will already know you want to take about half an inch of the insulation off it doesn't matter which end and you can use these wire cutters they're ancient there's much better ones on the market now i've had these for years or you can just use pliers but you can see on these ones it says 2.5 on there i don't know if you can see but so you put the wire into the 2.5 and you want about half an inch and just strip off the end of the wire like that now you just squish them together so they're easier to go through the hole and then push it through i'm trying to watch what i'm doing and watch the camera at the same time and there they go Try and get it to come out the other side if you can. And then you see it's got a blue insulation and there's a blue on there. Well, it was when it was new, blue on there. And you just squash and I'll squash it twice. And that's it, just give it a tug, make sure it's okay. 
and that's how you fit one of those connectors okay all the solar cables are routed in now but it's still not connected and as you can see all the tails are by the solar controller and they're all marked it makes life much easier now I'll just show you the one between the van battery and the controller because once I start putting the trims back in you won't be able to see it it comes from the controller down to the door top of the door post down the door post and comes out in the cab I'll just go around and show you that right and it comes out the bottom of the door post there um, and when you're rooting the wires round always leave them very loose they're not there's no tension on them wires and it comes round through the uh, the doorstep Sorry about this, I'm trying to hold the camera and the light. Uh, in round there and up and underneath the uh, the carpet. And there's a bit of a recess so you're not going to squash it when you stand on the carpet. And it's all clipped in. The red wire you can see is the, store, the um, split charger wire which I fitted back in. Um, 2019 I've rooted this one the same way around and then out to the battery now I'll go around the other side and I'll, I think you can see it better from the other side okay there's the um, solar cable when it comes out of the carpet and then you've got the blue wire is the earth wire now I know on 12 volt systems that's normally black but they've used 240 volt colouring for the cable for the solar cable so the blue is the earth the brown is the live comes through and that is where it joins to the fuse holder it's just a, a crimped connector comes in the kit and you use it just the same as the eye eye connector that i showed you before it comes along into an inline fuse holder fitted with a 10 amp fuse round and to the live side of the battery I've just watched that clip back and just to uh, save any confusion this inline fuse has got nothing to do with the solar system that's uh, a split charger I think but it's got nothing to do with today's uh, job that's the wire blue wire to earth brown wire that's the inline fuse for the uh, solar not that one nothing to do with it just thought I'd clear that up well the routing of the cables is almost done um, now I'm just going to show you something first if you're wondering how to get the wires through the awkward positions like the door post um, just a coat hanger cut a coat hanger up push it through the restriction tape the cable on the other end and pull it back through um, right well, as I say when Ellie uh, finished the routing of the cables we've got one last thing to do before we connect and the solar controller as i said before is going to be in an overhead cabinet so you don't want to be going in the cabinet every time you want to check what's happening so i've got a remote meter to go in and that's the little meter that you get and it's got a wall mounted bracket if you want the wires to be showing if you want to do it the like the easy quick way there's a little gap in there for the wire to go through but i like all my wires to be concealed i think it looks more professional so i'm going to go for the surface mounted um meter and i'm going to put it in there um, which means cutting a hole in here and rooting the wires through to the controller well if you're going to surface mount it like me there's a, a little bulge on the back that you're going to have to cut a hole in the bulkhead for that to fit into now I measured it and it's three inches across so I've scouted around and I've found a hammerite tin that's three inches across so what I've done is I've drawn around the paint tin 
and I'm just about to cut the hole in the bulkhead now but I've forgotten where the beams are so I'm not sure what's behind there and what I should have done was played the bulkhead video this morning to remind myself where the what was behind there but I didn't so I'm gonna to have to take a leap of faith and uh, just go for it well there's no going back now build the holes just gotta join the dots and cut the hole out well there we go Ah, uh, that was a stroke of luck. I'll have to buy a lottery tonight. Right, we're nearly ready to connect now. As you can see, the meter, the remote meter is in. It is connected, this end, but it's not connected on the uh, controller end. That's the wire for it there. These are all the tails ready to be connected. Um, now, what I was going to show you was, in the wiring diagram... That I got with the solar controller it shows an isolator switch so you can isolate the panel now when I rang up for the extra cable I asked the man because there's no switch in the kit now he said it was optional he says they've fitted loads of them and they've never put a they've never put a isolator switch in yet but I wanted some means of isolating it so I looked online for a isolate our switch they're 20 pounds now you're not going to use it very often you'll be lucky if you use it once a year so you don't need a 20 pound switch so what i've done is i've bought another inline fuse which is only about two pound i think but what i've done is i've just split the uh split the outer that's the outer insulation on your cable i've just split it down to the length of the um, inline fuse holder split it down then connected the inline fuse holder on the live wire the uh, the brown wire and made them the same length for when you're going to connect it into there and then I've taped it put it back into the uh, the black insulation and then taped it up so it's nice and secure you'll not be you know, flopping around and it's it's not as easy as a switch but you know, if you're only going to use it once a year, um, and you've saved eighteen pound, so that's just a little tip. If you want to put an isolator in, as you, as I say, it's optional. You don't need to. But now I've got everything connected, and these are all the tails. I'm saying I've got everything connected. And I haven't. I haven't got the panel connected. Um, but now I can because I'm. I've took the fuse out. If you have, there's no fuse in there. So if I connect the panel now. That's switched off so um that way i won't be live um now the uh the connections outside are waterproof they're special connectors they're called mc4 connectors now i've never done them before so i'm gonna shoot off and um have a quick read of the instructions and then i'm gonna <laughs> then i'm gonna connect the uh mc4 waterproof connectors I'll show you in a second well I've done the first one just uh, so that I sort of knew what I was talking about while I was on camera but I don't know if it's me I don't think it is these instructions are terrible they've uh, that is the brown which is live and the um, it says minus on there and this one has got plus on there and this is the earth and it's the way that they fit into there because that is the the live and that one is a um, male that's a female and that one is a, uh, a female and that's a male so it has to go around that way so I'm sort of ignoring the uh, the instructions like I normally do I'll just do it my way um, main instructions don't seem to get on um the chinese as well and so uh it's not written very well so anyway we'll just do it my way so what you do is you cut the black insulation back um two three inches 
and bear um, it says five millimeters and it's got a bit of a warning saying if you make it more than five millimeters there's a possibility of obstruction and short circuit I'm not really sure what they mean um, but anyway that's that's about I haven't got a tape measure on it but uh, that's about five mil and it goes into there and you don't actually clamp it onto the insulation you only clamp it onto the um, copper core inside and I'm only doing this with pliers not the special tool now if you crimp one in slightly first and then put that into there and then squash the one you've already started to bend and then fold the other one over and then give it a good nip I want to nip it with this this one Now, you might have thought, oh, you should have put the nut on first, but you don't have to. So you just take the nut off. Make sure you don't lose anything that's inside. The spacers and seals inside. Put that over. Like that. And then put that into there. And then you push till you feel and hear a click. I did on the first one, I haven't heard it on this one. But it won't go in any further, so. That's it. And then tighten that up. And that is it. Because I want to check it with the voltmeter and make sure it's a good connection. So, what we're going to do is, I'm just going to turn the camera off and I'm going to move the cardboard off the. Um, panel and we'll check the voltage right I'm just going to check the voltage on the uh, the panel before we connect connect it up and then check it at the other end and if there's a bad connection there'll be a voltage drop so that is the live live one and that is the uh, and we've got 17 Point six seven seventeen and a half volts. Oh my god, not seventeen and a half volts. Now what we're gonna do is connect it up and we'll see what we've got on the other end. Right, can you see I've got the voltmeter connected now? Um and it's important now that these wires don't touch well at the minute it's all right but when i put the fuse in those two wires don't have to touch so i'll we'll pop the fuse in and uh, 1733 um diving around a bit but we're getting 17 volts over over 17 volts so i'd proves that here the connection is good and also uh, proves that I was right to ignore the polarity signs on those connectors because if I had connected it wrong it would have been minus 17 on there so there's no minus which means the polarity is right and um, well that's it connected we're ready to uh, connect into the solar controller. Well, I thought I'd better read the instructions again last night, but I still don't understand them. They're, they're not very uh, easy to understand, unless it's just me. Anyway, I'm just gonna attach these six little pin connectors to the, uh, the tails of the uh, solar wires, and then we'll try connecting it.
and I hope it's going to be sort of obvious what you have to do. Um, anyway, fingers crossed. We're trying a second. Right, those little pin connectors are just crimped on the wire, just like the other battery um, connectors. Now here, here we've got the solar charger and the bottom section normally has a cover on but I've removed it to show you where the wires are connected. The wires come in from the bottom and the screws are through those six holes. Now you can see from left to right, solar panel, battery one, battery two. And it's got plus and minus on each one. It's pretty obvious. So you connect the wires into there, but make sure at this stage, when you're connecting the wires in, that you still have the fuses removed from all the fuse holders. Right, it seems to be working. Now to connect the circuits, you have to do it in sequence. You have to do the starter battery first, leisure battery second, solar panel third. Now, just to confuse you, it's got battery one, battery two. Battery one is the leisure battery, battery two is the starter battery. So you go two, one, solar panel. Now it says connect the uh, circuits. Well, you've already connected them, but because the fuses are out, they're not connected so when it says connect them just put the fuse in so that's how you connect them now i haven't worked it all out exactly but i'm going to show you what i think the display is showing right this is the remote meter so let's have a look see what we've got turn it on now we've got the little icons now that is obviously the solar panel and there's a sun there now i think there's a moon as well so at night i think it shows a moon i might be wrong i'm not sure um there's a little icon of a battery there and a little icon of a battery there and above it it's got main and start main is the leisure battery start is the van battery and you can see there's little lines a bit like your mobile phone so there's a instant reference straight away you see the uh, main battery is three quarter charged Fan battery's half charged. Um, I'll give you the figures for the bars later on if you want. Um, now we've got a little arrow pointing down from the solar panel, so it's saying 13.8 volts. You've also got the little arrow going to the main battery, so it's going that is going to the main battery. Now we scroll through the um, menu now. The little arrow on the main battery is pointing that way so that's the voltage of the main battery 12.8 um, when the arrow is coming away from the battery that's what the battery will give you 12.8 next one is the starter battery is 12.7 again the arrow is coming away from the the icon of the battery auto i'll come back to auto in a second Oh, now we are back to um, the original screen, 15.8 volts. Right, the um, the auto, if you go back to that, if you push this middle button here, a little, um, little icon comes in the bottom of the screen there. Now they've called it auto globe view. Now I think it's a automatic scrolling menu. Now it's scrolling through all the parameters of the different things. So we're on watts there now, watt hours. That's the uh, the battery voltage again, 12.8. Amps is 0.0 amps. Volts, 12.9. Um, and it just scrolls through. It tells you the minimum and maximum it's the parameters of the different batteries now what you've got to do when you first turn it on there now it's, that's a sealed battery one you have to select that and tell the uh the charger what type of battery you've got not the van battery the leisure battery and then to get out of it just push that as well and then back to there and then back to the other view well, there you go, clear as mud. Now, I'll just tell you what the bars on the battery uh, relate to. Right, um, 
one bar is between 13 and 35 percent two bars is 36 to 61 percent three bars is 62 to 86 percent and four bars is 87 to 100 percent um quick reference on the on the battery um i'm just thinking that uh auto scroll screen i don't think i'll ever use that because all i want to know is is it charging in what state me state of charge me batteries are in so uh, i don't think i'll bother with that auto thing but if you want to fill your boots right did you understand all that right you're a solar expert now <laughs> um well solar expert i bet somebody writes in the comments and says this is wrong and that's wrong which they're probably right because i'm a beginner as well this is the first time i've done solar um now the uh solar controller has got a screen as well and it shows exactly the same as the remote meter so if you've got your uh solar controller in a prominent position that you can see you wouldn't need to put the remote meter in so we've exhausted my knowledge on uh, solar panels now in solar systems so we bring the uh, video to an end and uh, thank you for watching and you take care and see you on the next one thanks very much